Okay, my friends, this is the day I've been waiting for. Long-awaited muon physics experiment nears moment of truth. Particle surprise mass threatens to upend standard model. Is the standard model broken? Physicists cheer major muon results. Physicists spellbound by deepening mystery of muon particles magnetism. Well, I've been showing it, and I can show it right now. Okay, I'm going to make it real simple. We found the muons, which is the black one, and the electrons, which are these the muon electron neutrinos, and as I'll show you in here. The white one glows and is explosive, and the black one is dark matter. Same particles that they found long ago at CERN and, and be, from their debris from their collisions. We use light so we can see the particles as they manifest themselves. And here they are right here. As the, as the light actually accelerates, it displays its particle nature. It splits here. And that's when we can see the split of the black and the white forming the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino separating into the showers and the sterile muon. Precisely what CERN wants to see, and here it is. Now, they are thrilled by the magnetism of the black muon. Well, it, magnetism can be, can be characterized in many different ways. This is an attractive cold particle. That's what it is. Let's talk about magnetism a little later, but here's my model of the electron flood theory, which I've had for a very long time. Bohr never worked, ever. Dipoles are the only thing that exists, and here they are. There's a dipole there and a dipole here. Exactly what CERN, uh, I mean, uh, Fermilab is saying now. Two little bar magnets, I agree. And the electron neutrino has a field, or a huge, gigantic field. So when it comes through the air and concusses with the little particles in front of it, it starts to glow, and that will charge up and flip, and that will go to the front. These are fixed. They never change their size. And that is why they force the white ones to squirt through our venturi. We actually created fission and fusion, and here it is right here. The black ones can't get through our venturi. That's only a single slip. And it's forcing the white ones to come through, and then they recombine instantly, because this is light, and this much of a distance is about this much of a distance. So they're already recombining. That's the muon neutrino, the black one. That's the electron showers, and it started with the white one attached. And they would never detach from each other. When they detach, it gains 200 times its energetic value. All right, again, the green is pretty powerful compared to the red. I'll show you another shot of that in a second. But if you look carefully here, you're going to see that there's a lot of white and a lot of black. See all the black? There's a ton of black. Not a single black over here. This, there's two, two pins, and one of them had to be in front like this, and this is like caroming off. And this is strictly allowing the red, I mean the... Um, glowy particles to go this way. And you see all those concussive waves? This is enormous increase in energy from what it started. And we can separate it. If we can separate this go this way and this go that way, we just separate it. Now this gives you an idea of the difference of energy potential between red and green. Just look at the glowiness first of all compared to that. This is just dull. And this really has no really energetic value to speak of, very, very weak. What happened? This was the stream of red. This is the, the laser, basically. This is the laser light of red. However, it's so weak that the green overwhelmed it and just pushed basically all of the particle nature of it down. And it actually turned it into barrel rollers. They are not supposed to roll that way. They spin this way, according to the Earth. That is, that's the first time this has ever been seen, unless somebody else can show it. I can, I've never seen it before. They're rolling this way because the green is just, these particles were coming this way. The green grabbed a hold of the white and just spun it like this way. You see them? And even the green is spinning this way too because they all 
just making that kind of an effect. Now, what's going on here? Why they didn't go? We still have a little bit of this. I believe is the concussive zone of the green hitting the red and still grow, glowing a little bit white. But the most of the really cheap stuff just got pushed down and spun. All right, let me just show you the progression of the particles coming in. They start to accelerate and they start to glow. Then they show the box formation, which is the particles back to back, muons and, and electron neutrinos. And then they separate at the venture. Identical same situation with the green. The green are a little juicier than the red. The red is really slow and so you can really see it well. The green is a little harder to see, but we picked up one absolutely fabulous. This one's in the in the spin phase. It's just getting ready to spin. This is overcharged and that one's going to come to the front. That's how they wobble and spin. The red one had already spun. Now the blue is a rocket ship. Comes through the venturi and you can't even, you know, it's just so what's happening? It's spinning fast as hell here. And it's slowing down here and then you can actually see the separation of the two particles that make up the spinning photon but it's kind of hard to see it because it's just so fast okay this is what the claim is is that these are the particles that CERN and Fermilab and all, all the particle colliders have seen and they are the smallest ones and then they see a whole zoo of particles as they see quite often but they are not elementary these are only elementary particles and when you put two of them together like here two of them is an electron it's a bar magnet, but it's, it's really an electron. And two back-to-back -back make the, the photons. And we can separate the black from the, the white, as I showed. This is the nature of the new world of electronics. And I think we can get free energy right now. So I need somebody to talk to me, that's all. And we'll, we'll see if we can get somewhere. They, they're realizing now that all the things they've assumed were just aren't right. So let's just talk and see if we can get something for free. Okay, for today I'm going to leave it at this. But if we can move quick on this, all of these things exist right now. You saw we could create these electron and muon neutrinos and split them. And this is the result of that, is this extremely high energy burnable power and I believe that's a hundred percent raw electrons you should be able to filter that through and run anything you want and you could put it these things are so tiny that you could put them in a box like this and that should be a big enough surface area inside that box with all these rows of lasers and absorbers which would be thin film perovskites they call them now it's nothing more than a solar collector only it's on steroids, and with a bazillionth of an inch away from the Venturi, it picks up all of that radiation 200 times impact value. And you can see from the pictures I showed, it's absolutely enormous radiation when it concusses here. Now, that's 5 watts would turn into 1,000. That is enormous increase in energy, and that's by splitting these. When they snap back together, that's when you get that energy. Mass is energy. That's Einstein's theory, which is not right, but it, it does relate to it. It's actually the change in energy equals the change in mass. So the harder you hit something, the more energy you have. The bigger the ball is when it hits something, the more energy you have. It relates to both things, how much it weighed to start with, how fast it's going, and what the impact value of the thing it hits. So there's a little more to it. But Einstein was right. Energy and mass are very closely related. Now, inside of here, I don't see any reason you couldn't power a house, a car, a boat, a train, anything you wanted. Airplanes with this totally free and AC, DC, 50, 60 cycles, European, and just any kind of outlet. You just plug it in and you're off to the races. Now, this is, of course, a Geiger counter, but it doesn't. you'd have something like this. Solid state. You never have to stop driving your car. That would change the world overnight. And I've shown this over and over. Now that they, they've realized they were wrong about the polarity of the muon and about 
really my research because I've been really pushed back against and I've really been screaming and fighting and I want to apologize now because I guess this is the way things have to happen extremely slowly, glacially. <laughs> but hopefully we get free energy. If we can, that's a win-win, my friends. That's a win-win. That's all I'm looking for is to try to pull the world out of the mess it's in. And free energy is the only way. Right now we're destroying the earth. People are being crushed because of other people have power than they, because they have power. This is power in every respect. I want nothing for it. There's no patent on it. It's been shown for many years. So anybody can do this, and all they have to do is create this venturi, harvest that energy, and create their own little design. And I imagine they could patent some special little design or orifice or something. But pretty much, the, I don't think you can patent this now. But it should be done. I don't care who does it. Okay, my friends, as I said, there's a new model. I'm going to submit a little article to Nature and see if they will publish it. And um, it's just going to be very brief, a little couple of paragraphs. That's all that's needed. That's the entire, <laughs> that's my model right there. You call me a simpleton, that's fine, because I like simple. And that is simple. Everything's made out of those two little particles, the red and the black one. And that's what we always thought was an electron. But electrons bounce and burn and do all those kind of things. They're lightning, they're static, they're electricity. But they always had that black particle attached. Nobody ever knew about it. Once you get into the photon realm, you're into light. That stuff bounces off you. That stuff burns you. And then as you get bigger and bigger, you get into protons, and then you get into, you know, complex molecules. This has to change. These aren't just one big hydrogen proton. It's 1,839 electrons with one more hanging out in space that says, I'd like to get in here. And they say, no, 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 we got enough. And it says, well, please, nope, nope, you can stay out there at five angstrom units. That's as far as you can get. That's quantum. We've got a lot to talk about. So I'm going to put the article out. And I hope they'll put it. I've never had anybody respond yet. So we'll see. This time maybe it's different. They, they do realize now. The, the, they've always said, oh, these are neutral and they have all kinds of things that I always fought back against. But... You know, you, you, you can't fight the law because the law wins. <laughs>